Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1209. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 1206 to 1209, and follow along, click on the link below the video. In this video, we got to talk about this amazing function, binome.dist.range. Now, this function does probabilities for binomial experiments. And back in Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video 33, I did all sorts of example of binomial experiments and binomial probabilities. We plotted it. We calculated the whole distribution. We talked about what defines a binomial experiment. And we calculated a bunch of probabilities. But the nice thing about this function, which I didn't cover in that particular video, is this function can calculate an individual binomial probability or you can give it a lower and an upper, and it will calculate between an upper and lower to get the total probability. Now, our binomial experiment, here it is. A flight from Oakland to Seattle occurs six times per day. The probability that any one flight is late is 10%. So that's from past data. What is the probability that exactly two planes are late, less than two planes are late, or the probability that between one and three planes are late. So this is the one that's going to just be so much easier with this new function. Now, in order to have a binomial experiment, you have to have a fixed number of trials. We do. There's six. That means six flights every day. Each trial only results in a success or failure. We're going to define success as late. And yes, it, every plane is either late or not late. P, that's the probability of success, remains the same for each trial. Yes, and our probability based on past data is 0.1. That's the probability that a plane might be late. And all events are independent. Now, let's scroll down here just a little bit and remind ourselves, um, because when we see how easy this function is compared to the earlier just binome.dist, it's going to be quite amazing. If we wanted to calculate the probability of exactly 2, we just went ahead and used binome.dist. And we would have to tell it the probability mass function and put false or 0. So if I put a 0, no problem. It calculates exactly 2. And if we were looking at a chart, it would be this height right here. If we wanted to calculate less than or equal to two flights late um, in a day, we simply used in the last argument true or cumulative. And I put a 1. This 1 or cumulative always goes from the bottom x up to whatever x you put in. So that was the only way that we had to do between. And watch this. When we had to do between 1 and 3 inclusive, we had to do two binomes. We have to do the binome dist of the upper and then subtract the lower. And if we're given 1 because we wanted to include 1, we had to subtract 1. But look at that two different binome.dist. Now, let's just see this new function equals binome, and instead of binome.dist, binome.dist.range. Now here, we still have to put the number of trials, six flights per day, comma. The probability of success any particular flight being late is 0.1. And watch this. They give us number of successes, and then in square brackets, a second one. None of that 1 for cumulative or 0 for the probability mass. It's just going to look at our inputs. If we give it just one number of successes, it'll calculate the individual amount. If we give it 2, it'll do between. So our first example, I'm going to say the lower. And this first one's got to be the lower comma. That means number of successes. In one day, we had one late flight comma, number of successes, we had three late flights in six tries. So to do between, that's it. Control Enter. We get the same exact probability. So the probability that in one day we get between one and three flights late is like 46.7%. Ah, That's a lot easier than that one. And if we want to do the individual, we don't have to use that 0 and 1 as our last argument. We just use binome dot dist dot range. I say number of trials, comma, probability of success that anyone playing is late, comma, and I just put a 2. I don't even bother to put that second one in. Remember, any argument in your screen tip that has square brackets, that means if you leave it out, it'll assume the default, which is, hey, calculate the individual probability, and boom. There is the probability of getting, in one day, two flights late. And we can see the height right there. 
Now, we do want to look at an example where we still have to be careful like earlier. Whoops, I want the dot, dis, dot range. If we're asking the question, uh, what's the probability that the number of flights are greater than 1 and less than or equal to 3, and our input is 1, we have to be careful. Trials, there are six flights in a day, comma. Probability that any one particular flight is late is 0.1, comma. The lower end number of successes, well, I can't just click on 1 because that 1 is included. Binome.dist.range will include both of the numbers that are put into the last two arguments. So if I'm given a 1 and I want greater than 1, I have to be sure and add 1 to bump myself up to the next actual probability. So now the input there is 2, comma. And now I can say 3. Those two values will be included, close parentheses, control enter. That's the probability of flights late greater than 1 and less than or equal to 3. Wow, binome.dist.range. All right, we'll see you next video.